This tutorial is for creating custom Inquisitors from Dragon Age Inquisition using a combination of Blender and XPS. First, I will show you how to extract the head, eyes and eyelashes straight from the game. Then import them into Blender and apply them to a base mesh. This method can also be used to create NPCs, which you can also extract from the game or with Dragon Age Inquisition Mod Maker. Load in the Dragon Age Inquisition Mod Maker with Ninjaripper and then load in a head morph of the NPC you want and then following the same steps in this video. Run the game through Ninja Ripper with the DirectX 11 injector. Load a game and use your flycam go close to your Inquisitor. This is also a good time to get a good front and side reference image. Also a good reference image of the eye. Press print screen to get them. Once ready, rip the meshes. Mine is Control plus one as I change the default buttons. In game, if you haven't paused, it's not as noticeable. However, if you look closely on the right, the lights stop flickering on mine. This is because it started ripping the meshes. Once it starts moving again, it has finished. In this tutorial, I'm showing two custom inquisitors. One I already have, and one I newly made. These next images are showing my references for the second inquisitor. Rename the folders once you have ripped the meshes so this way it's easy to identify them. Now using Notice we need to convert the ripped meshes from the Ninja Ripper format into dot .object. I have found that most head meshes for elves, dwarves and humans are 574 kilobytes, eyes 55 kilobytes and lashes 34 kilobytes, give or take a few kilobytes. However, for Canary it is roughly 613 kilobytes give or take for the head mesh, whereas eyes and lashes are the same usually for all races. First, clean the scene of all objects in Blender and import the base mesh. First, I will show you the elven male and then the canary female, so I am porting the base elven male head mesh. Then import the meshes we ripped from the game. I generally import the ripped meshes on another layer. I will warn you, they don't look like they do in game just yet. This is because what you see in game is this mesh with bones moved as well. However, there is no current method to apply this data, so we have to do it manually in XPS once we've exported the mesh to XPS. To apply the ripped mesh data to the base head mesh, we need to first select the ripped mesh with right click, then shift and right click the base mesh. Both should be highlighted with an orange line. Then go to the data tab, shape keys and click on the downward arrow and click join as shapes. You might have a good laugh at what it looks like without bone movement or think it looks creepy. But this is how the mesh looks like without bone movement. Some people have had this type of mesh data for souls appear in game. There is a link in the description for those curious about what that looked like. In this case, I can already tell the brow, eyes and mouth needs to be moved and possibly some other bones as well. If you get a case like Solus where the teeth are showing, this means the lips of the mouth need moving forward. Do not move the teeth in Blender. You will see later what I mean with a canary female. Go to the same downward arrow and click new shape from mix. Then delete the previous two. This forces the mesh to be our ripped mesh, otherwise it would export as the base shape. In order to correctly export the mesh to XPS from Blender, the order of the textures does matter, as does what you name the meshes. They need to be in the right order for the render group you wish to use. In this case, you should only be using render group 24 and number 7. 24 for the head and eyes, and 7 for the eyelashes. For render group 24, the first layer of the material has to be the diffuse texture, the second, the light map texture, the third, the normal map texture, and the fourth, the specular texture. For render group 7, all you need is a texture with an alpha channel applied to the first layer of its material.
When you have finished naming all the pieces and assigning their texture, it is ready to export to XPS. Now some may notice I missed naming the eyes. You name them 24 underscore eyes underscore 1 underscore 0 underscore 0 underscore 0. I didn't show fixing this mistake in the video, but I did make it. In a second, you will see what I meant about the teeth showing on the canary female. I have made this part fast as it is repeating what I just showed you. You might wonder if I really needed to show you one with the teeth showing, as it can look creepy. However, if you have an NPC or Inquisitor where the mouth or jaw has been moved back, this is what you will get. And now you have been forewarned why it looks like that. Going back to what I said earlier, in game what you see is this mesh with bones moved as well. So that is what we are going to do now, move the bones to their correct positions. Now this is all by sight, which is why I advise to always have reference images, front and side if possible. We use the move option in XPS and select the bones we wish to move. The width of the face will look off, or maybe the height of the face will look slightly off. It looks right when rendered in Blender however, so I believe it's the perspective of the camera you get in XPS that causes them to look slightly different once you finish moving the bones. A prime example of this are my two female Lavalan Inquisitors I've made previously when testing this out. This image shows them in game and rendered side by side. When I am somewhat happy with the positions, I then create the texture and later do any further edits to the mesh. Editing the XCF I have linked to in the description and on DVR is how we get our texture. This also requires a reference image to try and match colours of skin, lips, etc and what eyelashes, scalp, skin textures they use to look how they look in game. Taking into account lighting in game. If they are outside or in good lighting it is safe to follow those colours. However, if they are inside you may find yourself darkening the skin quite a lot or if they're in an area that is too bright you might find yourself lighting in the skin too much. So again please use reference images. If you are making your Inquisitor and not an NPC you don't have to match how they look in game if there is a different look you want for them. For example you may not have been able to get the skin tone you wish for them in game. However if you're making an NPC it is best to match their in game look. For the eye texture, I either use the XCF I provided and edit that, or I get a close enough screenshot of the eye and use that. 
Using a screenshot usually requires some rotating, mirroring and editing of the texture. However, it can get a better look of the colour than just using the base XCF I provided. I originally used a screenshot of her eye from when she was outside Haven. This next screenshot I use for the eye is from the character creation screen, as I like how it looks there better. For this bit, I am showing making an edit to my male Avalan in Blender with Sculpt. However, I have now realised his nose was bunched up because I hadn't moved left and right upper nose bone down. If you get a similar issue where the ridge between the brows is bunched up or looks messed up, it is likely this same problem. This is a Blender Cycles render with my hero Dar, who you watched me partially create in this video. So the next steps after finishing the head is adding their other parts, hair, horns, outfits, etc. I hope this tutorial has been helpful. Thank you for watching.